Don't you love it when your parents find pictures to show everybody? <laughs> oh, that was great. That was great. This is the day that we honor our graduating seniors, and we're so proud of their accomplishment and what they've done. And I know that uh, you will be praying for them as they begin a new walk. And you just keep them before the Lord and ask God to continue to bless them. We're going to give them a gift from our church to uh, hopefully to share and, and to uh, trust the Lord to use the words that are there to guide and to lead them. And as we give them that gift, you say a prayer for each one as they walk up. We'll pray for them here in just a moment, but just say a little prayer for them for God's grace and mercy. Uh, in their life as they begin. Sherry Siebert is going to come and, and read our names and we'll present them a gift. Graduates, would you please stand? Lacey Ballou, daughter of John and Kelly Ballou. Aaron Mayberry. Son of Wendell and Kelly Mayberry. <laughs> Madison Parks, daughter of Carl and Stephanie Parks. Kai Parnell, son of Kyle and Kayla Parnell. This is a great time and some of you can remember when you did this, and some of you say, I think I did this. <laughs> but it's always a great time to know we have accomplished, but yet there's so much ahead of them. And I think it's, it's good for us this morning that we stop for a minute and we pray for this, these seniors, for our seniors and for all the seniors that will be moving on. And we're just trusting God to bless and to keep them. So we want to pray together and just ask God to bless them, and then we'll greet each other after that. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace, your goodness. Father, I want to say thank you for uh, these four graduates, Lord, that we have. And I ask you, Father, that you minister to them, that you bless them. Father, I pray that you give wisdom and discernment, Father, in the days that are ahead. Father, guide them in the path that you have prepared for them. Father, I pray that as they, they move on and as they continue to grow, Father, that they'll grow in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Father, that they'll grow close. And Father, that they will continue to follow and trust you in everything that they do. We ask, Father, that you bless the families. We pray that you would minister to their hearts. And ask you, Father, that you continue to give them encouragement and strength as they stand with their, these young people as they continue to move forward. Father, we lift these graduates into your arms and we pray that you bless them, that you keep them, and we pray that Christ would be glorified through them in all that they do. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're glad that you're here. We welcome you and we thank you for uh, being a part of us today and sharing this time with us. We're glad that you are our guest. If you are with us for the first time, uh, there is a little white card in the pew in front of you that says, Welcome to Central Baptist Church. If you take a moment, fill that out for us. In a moment, the offering plates will pass. Put that in that offering plate. Let us have a record of your visit. But right now, let's find somebody and hug them and tell them how much we are proud of, we're proud of them. Good to see them. Love somebody in the name of the Lord. Good morning. Welcome to the Sunday morning worship service of Central Baptist Church in Pampa, Texas. I'm Norman Rushing, pastor of the church. We're glad that you are a part of us. We're glad that you have taken time to be with us and to share this time with us. 
And I just praise God for these seniors that we have recognized this morning. They have accomplished so much. God has blessed them. And we know that God has something very special for them. So you pray for these four seniors uh, that have come and, and just ask God to continue to bless them. We appreciate you taking time to be with us this morning, uh, to worship with us by radio and by Facebook. We're so glad that you're a part of us, and we welcome you and thank you for taking the time to be with us today. And we know that you minister to us by praying for us and by being a part of our worship each and every Sunday. If you're working today, God bless you. It's kind of misty outside, and it's, it's muddy. We'll never say anything bad about the mud because we know that this thing can shut off just any time. So we just praise God for the good rain that we have. You guys that are working, be careful, and I know that God will bless you. Thank you for sharing with others about our ministry, that they can join us as well. In just a moment, I want you to take your Bible, and I want you to join me. <coughs> Excuse me, we're going to be in Joshua chapter 22. We're going to be sharing with the seniors today and with their parents and talking about the things that, that are ahead and the things that God has for them. And Joshua has given us a good, a good uh, example to follow and a path to follow, things that you and I need to do and to understand that this is the direction that God has for each and every one of us. So you take your Bible in the Old Testament, Joshua chapter 22. Have your Bible ready. Sing the songs with us. It's going to be a great day in the Lord. I'm so glad that you're a part of us today. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. We love you in the Lord. We will. 
God, we just thank you for this day, for this time that you've given us here in this place, Lord. Help us to realize what it means to be a Christian, Lord. Help us to live lives that are, uh, that where, we look, where we look like Christians to, to people that don't know what a Christian is, Lord. I just pray for those that are lost today. Pray that you'd be close to them. Lord, I pray for these four seniors that are graduated. I pray that you would... Just stay with them and help them, Lord, through the trials of the next step in their life. I pray that they would always be faithful to you. We thank you for each one of them. Father, I just pray that you'd cleanse our hearts and our minds, prepare us for, for the message that Norman brought this morning. I uh, pray that you would touch lives and, and that you would change the way people live by this message, Lord. Father, I just pray that you would forgive us where we sin against you. I pray that as we take this offering, you'd bless the gift and the giver. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hadn't this been a blessed morning? We've, we've done so many things this morning, and I, I'm thankful for uh, all that we were able to do. We've got some folks that are in need of our prayers this morning, and I don't want to be remiss in not mentioning these and uh, letting you know who they are and encouraging you to pray for them. Most of us know Travis Balch uh, has been diagnosed with mesothelioma. And Travis is at home, and he told me last night he, he felt better, but he'll be going to his oncologist Tuesday, hopefully to determine what can be done and, and what can be done to help treat this. So you keep Travis in your prayers. Sue Bishop is having some gallbladder problems, and 
she's trying to find a doctor that is able to treat her because of uh, the different things that uh, she's going through. So you pray for Sue, pray for wisdom and discernment, pray that God will touch and heal and, and bless her in a special way. Brian Frost will have his second treatment this coming week. He's got two more to go after that, and hopefully things will uh, be uh, taken care of so that uh, he doesn't have to go back and do that anymore. He's gaining stamina, but still needs our prayers and getting his strength back. And then let me mention to you uh, a young lady that Julie Frost uh, asked us to pray for. Her name is Alice Martinez. She is the lead secretary for the special education in Pampa school system. And she was diagnosed just the other day with cancer. And evidently the cancer is so far advanced, there's just not much they can do for her. And so she is, was supposed to come home on hospice. And Julie told me how much she loved the Lord and trusted him and uh, what a sweet lady she was. And so, you know, I, I may not know her. Some of you may know her. But folks, we can pray for her. So let's just pray for God's comfort and healing for her, Alice Martinez. And then we want to pray for Marianne Tipton. Marianne has been diagnosed uh, with renal insufficiency, which is a, a big word. She's about one step away from renal failure. So we want to pray for Mary Ann Tipton and, and ask God to bless and heal her. Those are the ones that we know of, and I know that you have others. So let's just say a little prayer for them, and we'll begin our message this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege of prayer. Father, for all of these that we've just mentioned, we pray that you would touch, that you would heal according to your perfect will. Father, we pray for wisdom, for discernment. We pray, Father, that you'd bring strength and ask, Father, that you touch their lives in a very special way. Wrap them in your arms. May they feel and know your presence. And, Father, we thank you that you are sovereign God. And, Lord, that you are working all things for good to those that love you. So, Father, we lift these into your care and pray that you bless them now. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to take your Bible and join me in the book of Joshua, chapter 22. And I know a lot of times and uh, we have seniors and graduation day, we talk about Joshua, uh, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. But we're going to be in a chapter that may not be as familiar to you, but it's a chapter that has some things in it that you and I need to understand and so as we approach this graduation day, we have to understand something. Not only is it for these graduating seniors and all that is going on with them, but it also takes a toll on parents. And parents need all the encouragement they can get. Some of them to make sure that uh, before this week is out that they don't kill their child somewhere in there. I, re I remember those days. Some of them is to encourage them uh, because they know uh, could be the last child in the house and they know it's time for them to, to move on and that, that always brings uh, that separation anxiety uh, to many. So we pray for families as we pray uh, for these uh, young people. But uh, I, I want to just share with you, I, I got to thinking the other day, you know, there, there's a lot of things that, and, and I, I can still remember this, and, and so can many of you. Uh, within our hearts and our, and our minds, we may not say it out loud, but there are some things that we really think are going to happen after we graduate. Now, you'll notice the title of the message, and I did that hopefully to catch your attention, but it's, it's true. You know what graduation means? You don't have any more summers. Yeah, and you'll find that out. Summer, you say, well, I'm going to college. Maybe, but you can count them on one hand how many summers you may have left. Because once you get out, there's no more summers. Okay? Now, there's some other things that we think of that I want to help you understand today. Here's the first one. Some of you will say, I am finally free from that school. I don't have to answer to any of those people anymore. I'm free. 
right. But you're not free from life. And I'm going to tell you something. Once you walk out of that school, the structure kind of falls. And I'll explain that to you here in just a minute. Then we say, nobody else can tell me what to do anymore. All of those teachers and those principals, parents, preachers, all of them trying to tell me what to do. And I don't have to listen to that anymore. Well, I've got three things for you that you need to write down and remember. Yes, you do have to listen. And you will be told what to do by three words. Bosses, spouses, and kids. Right? All right. Right. All right. So you, you don't, you can't do that. Here's another one. I can sleep as long as I want to. Because it's summer and school is out and I have graduated. Okay, I'm going to give you the fact that some of you, some of you be working, some of you won't. But you have a summer that buffers you. But I'm going to tell you something. Come August... You're either going to be at work or school. And you better learn to set your alarm clock. Because you can't go to work when you feel like it. Some people try to do that, but you can't do that. So learn to set your alarm clock. And then here's another one. You get to listen to all of these myths. And one of them is this. When I get to college, I don't have to go to class. They don't demand that you go to class. They don't say that you have to be there. And I can go once or I can go twice and, and I can go and do this and that. And I don't have to go to class. And if I'm sleepy or if I'm tired and all of these other things, I don't have to go. Well, I've got news for you. Once you get to college, those professors, they don't have to pass you either. And they don't have to help you catch up. You go to high school. Uh, I understand now you go to high school, you get with a teacher, teacher sits down, let's get this down, let's learn this, let's, let's catch all of this stuff up, all of these things, they get you going basically because they don't want to teach you anymore, they want you out, out, <laughs> move on. But you're going to find out in college, they don't do that. If you don't come to class, they'll fail you. And I got one little thing for you to remember if you're going to college. You can live that way and you can do that. But they mail your grades to your parents. You better keep that in mind. Now, here's the last one I'm going to share with you. And this is the one that a lot of people have and, and they, they keep it in their head. And especially graduates, some of you, not all of you, but some of you. And it's this little thing here. I know everything. I have graduated and I know everything. Well, I'm going to answer that for you. And I want you to listen to me real close. No. Because if you knew everything, you would know you don't know everything. All right? right? Amen. And guess what? Life sneaks up on you. You see, all of a sudden, you, you find yourself moving from this structure that you've been in to all of a sudden you find yourself with trying to build a structure and learn how to do and to fit in to whatever it is you're doing. Some are going to college, some are going to go to work. I don't know. Whatever God is leading you, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But because of this buffer that we have, these things called summer, we put these, these classes behind us and, okay, I've, I've made it through this year and this year and this year. And all of a sudden, I've made it through grade 12 and I've got the summer. But when that summer ends, oh, everything starts to change. It's totally different. And we're going to see those things here in just a moment. After the graduation, the buffer will last just for a while and then it'll be gone. But I want to show you a plan in which you can succeed. And it's a plan that was given to us by Joshua. And these postgraduate instructions that Joshua has given to us are things that you and I need to understand. Now, in chapter 22, 
I want you to look at verse 34. It's the last verse of the chapter. Now, let me say this before I read this. If you have a King James Bible, I'm going to, I'm going to read you a word here in just a minute so that you know what it, what it really means. And I'll, I'll tell the others what it is. It says in, in verse 34, And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad called the altar... And if you have a King James Bible, it says E-D, Ed. Now, I thought maybe that was Mr. Ed or Ed, whoever. But it's not Ed. The word is, in the Hebrew, it's aid, A-Y-D, aid. And that word aid means witness, okay? So they called the altar witness. For it shall be a witness between us that the Lord is God. Now, I want you to keep that in mind. The Lord is God. And all of your life, as, as you've grown up, many of you here in the church, you've grown up understanding that, that Jesus is Lord. God is our Lord, and, and He is over us. So what does God have for us? And here, here I just want to share these things with you right quick so that we understand uh, what's going on. Because we're fixing to start something brand new. It's going to be new for you. It's going to be new for your parents. It's going to be new for all of those that are a part of you, your grandparents. It'll be new. But notice this. God has a new plan for you. But I want to tell you something. The old plan is still intact. Because you see, God doesn't change. Now, to you, it's new. To God, it's the direction that He has for you. Okay, so it it stays intact. Now, I'm going to read a verse of Scripture to you. It's a beautiful verse of Scripture to to understand. And it comes out of the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 6. Now listen to what Jeremiah said. Thus says the Lord, Stand you in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. The old paths. The old paths is the good way way. Now, God's new plan for you involves your family. God's old plan for you involved your family. Graduation. Are you ready, graduates? Graduation is hard on your parents. I don't care what your dad says. You know, your dad will look at you and say, I'm ready for you to get out. I'm ready for you to do this. I'm ready for you to go. I remember saying those very same things, and all of a sudden they left. And you're not ready. And when you think about that as a parent, especially to those that are are looking at that empty nest that they call it, the empty nest where we look around and those children are not there anymore, the ones that you used to get up in the middle of the night, Because they were crying, and then they advanced from that into their beds, and you still got up in the middle of the night. Because they were sick, or something was wrong. And then they got to be teenagers, and you still got up in the middle of the night. Because they weren't home, and you're fixing to kill them when they walk in the door. And then when we go to school, or work, or whatever it might be, they're still up in the middle of the night. Wondering what's happening, what's going on. But I'm going to tell you, parents, if, especially if you're facing that, that empty nest syndrome, I want you to keep something in mind, okay? It'll improve your prayer life. Because you'll wake up and you'll just start praying. You'll start praying for them. And it's amazing as God lays those things on our heart that we learn how to, to, to pray. But listen now, graduates, you are in your family by the grace of God. God brought you to that family. And thank God, for by His grace, we have become a part of a family that loved us and gave to us. But we've also in that family been given responsibility. We all know, we, uh, fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. We all know about parents that are raising their children to nurture the admonition of the Lord, the discipline and the instruction of God. The responsibilities that we have as a parent to make sure that that child grows up. But there's also a responsibility that you have. 
And we've got something that's going on now that robs us of what this responsibility is. Because it very simply says, honor your father and your mother. Honor your father and mother that your days may be long on the earth. And we have been told that these Ten Commandments are outdated. And that we don't have to do that anymore. I've got news for you. Our God is just as contemporary right now as He was in the time that Moses wrote the commandments. Which means that the Word of God is contemporary every day that we live and you have a responsibility. And that is to honor your father and mother. I don't care if you're in college. I don't care if you are working. I don't care if you're 50 years old. Honor your father and your mother. That's what the Scripture says. Now that word honor that he uses there, it means to value them. So let's look back for a moment. You need to value the fact that they taught you so many things in life. That they made sure that you learned how to read and write and think. To teach you how to make decisions. To be there when when things begin to happen and to help you through. There'll be those times when you remember that when something happened, you just kind of backed up and all of a sudden mom and dad stepped in and they put you behind them and they took care of whatever's there and that's coming to a close. Because it comes to a time when all mom and dad can do is stand behind you and support you and tell you and encourage you. Folks, we've got to honor them because of what they taught us and what they've given to us. The time spent in going on vacations, the time spent in going to our extracurricular activity, whether it was football or baseball or softball or track or wherever it might be. They traveled distances to go and to make sure that you saw them there. And I don't know about you, but that's always been my idea to raising your children. Wherever they were and whatever they did, if they looked up in the stands, I wanted them to see me. I wanted them to know that I was there. In support. And that's just exactly what they did. The lessons that you have learned. The discipline that you've endured. And sometimes we say, I'm just ready to get away. And all of a sudden you begin to miss those things. All of these things make you stronger. So parents, let me describe it to you like this. And many of you will know what I'm talking about. You remember when you put the children on those little bicycles? with the training wheels and how fun it was to watch them pedal down the, down the street or in the driveway. And, uh, you know, when, when Jake was born, my, my oldest grandson, they lived in a house that had a driveway like this. And he had a little car that he pedaled. And when Julie went in the house one time, I put him at the top of that, and then I slid him down that hill and caught him. And she liked to have a fit. Because she just knew I was going to get him run over. I wasn't going to get him run over. We had fun. You should have seen Jake. He had a lot of fun. And then she started in on this getting on to me. And I said, wait a minute. That's my prerogative. I'm the grandparent. If I want to shove him out in the street, I will. You remember those little bicycles? You remember that day when you said we're going to take these little wheels off? You remember that? You get the ranch out, you unscrew those, you take those wheels off, and then you get that child, and you get them on that little bicycle, and you've got a hold of it, and you say, now pedal, 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 hang on, pedal, and you get to a certain point, and they're getting faster, and the reason that you're fixing to let go is because they're going faster than you can run, and you've got them, you've got them moving, And that you get to that point where they're fixing to start dragging you. And you give that one little shove. And they start this. And then all of a sudden, they straighten up. It's time to give that shove. We don't want to. But somewhere along the way, they have to learn to pedal. And that's what we're facing here today. But you see it by the grace of God. Because we have done what God has asked us to do. We're not through by any means. You never stop being a parent. Never. But it's the things that we do that have brought them to that point, And we can trust them in what they do. They ride away. They didn't go away. 
It's all because that's what life is all about. So let me encourage you to do this, graduates. Here's what God has for you. This, old, this new plan involves your trust in the old paths. In other words, it means to keep the promises of God. Now this chapter is about the two and a half tribes of Israel. It's about Reuben and Gad and a half tribe of Manasseh. And they, the fighting is over. They've taken the land and they are going back across Jericho. And that's what basically this is all about. But they made a promise to Moses and they said, we will fight with you until it's all done. And now they're going back. And Joshua said, you have kept your promise. Okay, graduates, parents, hear me now. You have made a promise to God. What is it? When you invited Jesus into your heart to save you. When you asked Jesus to come in, you made a promise to God. I want to live for you. I want to honor you. I want to serve you. But it means that I want to love you as you love me. I want to trust you. I want to follow you and obey you. And God is going to put you on that path. And He will take care of you as long as you follow the commands of God. Follow the straight path. The old path. That path that you followed as you were growing up in your home. Follow that path and seek the purpose of God. Where you've been, what you've done, prepares you to know what is ahead. Now there's going to be a lot of things happen along the way that you never expect, that you don't see. They're going to happen. There's the times when sometimes we have to break down and call and say, Mom, Dad, this has happened. What do you think? And they'll give you just exactly what you need. But there are going to be times when you need to take this to the Lord. And I'm going to guarantee you something. When you come to Christ, He is there for you. It means that we learn to listen to His voice and to obey Him as we move on. And here's what you need to do. First of all, you need to respect, honor, trust the Word of God. Psalms 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You want to be illuminated as you go forth in your life? Then walk in the word of God. In John chapter 6 and verse 68, Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Respect the word of God. And then nurture relate your relationship with God. Love Him and be proud that you belong to Him. God loves you and He saved you. Now when you love God, guess what? You love your parents. And when you get away, now I'm going to tell you something that you, don't, you can't, may not can see right now, but it'll happen. When you love God and you're away from your parents for a while, you remember just how much you love them and what they've done and what they've given to you. You love them. You have that relationship. When you love your parents, you'll love others. You're either, you'll even love your little brother or sister or your big brother or sister, whoever it might be. All of those things all of a sudden dawn on us that these are the things that we need to do. Rely on God. To keep your path straight. Cling to Him. Hold on to Him. Remember that when you need Him, He'll, call, he'll be there for you. Right. One passage of Scripture that I love, it's in Mark chapter 10. As Jesus is healing bl the blind Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus is crying out, calling in the Messiah. Calling to Him, Messiah, Son of David, have mercy on me. Messiah, Son of David, have mercy on me. And the Scripture says, and Jesus stood still. Listen to me, graduate. Listen to me, parents. There will come a time when we need to cry out. And when we cry out to Jesus, He'll stand still. And what He wants to know is, what can I do for you? What do you want? What do you want me to do? And tell Him what you need. Settle in your heart now that you belong to Him. Focus on Him and serve Him. But I'm going to tell you something, graduates especially, and I want you to hear me. Don't you ever, ever, ever be ashamed to look somebody in the eye and say, I'm a Christian. I don't do that. 
Don't you ever be ashamed of your Savior. Okay? That's the new plan. But the old plan stays intact. When God's new plan it happens in the old paths, it's always going to bring adversaries to you. Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. You read on in this chapter, and the children of Israel misunderstood what these three tribes were doing. They built an altar, and they said, you're building an altar to another god. And you're not serving the same God that we do. And they, they faced them, and they, they accused them of doing all of these things. You're going to bring in idols. You're going to bring in false worship. You're turning away from our God. You're rebelling against Him. They said, no. It's a witness. And God worked in their hearts and their minds. And this altar that they built, they called it a witness. That we stand with you. And we stand with your God. Many of you are going to a new place. In that new place, there's a new support system. You see, the support system you have may be miles away from you. So you, you find this new support system that you have. You don't give up on this one. This one is always there. But you will find, you'll have to find this new support system. But in that, you will find a new accountability. And here's what will happen if you're not careful. When things begin to look good to you outside of the things of God, you'll stop and you'll say, that looks good. No one knows I'm here. No one knows who I am. And so I can just do these things. And then Satan will bring people to you. And they will challenge your morals. They will challenge your doctrine. They will challenge your pride. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm speaking to the, our two young ladies here. And I just want to remind you of something. These fellers are going to come along. And y'all are too pretty. I, I wish I could go with you. I'd knock them in the head every time they come around. <laughs> but if, if you find somebody that wants to take you out, and, and that's fine. I get it. Then here's what you do. Always take your Bible with you. And when you get in the whatever it is, I, I hope it's nice, whatever it is. When you get in there. And he comes and sits down to drive off. You lay your Bible right there beside you. And he'll say, what's that? And you'll say, that's my Bible. And if you try anything, you're going to have to get over Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to get over here. All right. All right. Okay, y'all got that? All right. Okay. All right. Listen. I, I trust both of you. I, I, I do. But I've got a little gun you can carry if you need it. Either one of you, okay. Folks, we've got, to, we've got to understand that Satan will try, he'll try to, to lure us back. He'll try to take us away from what we know is right. And my, my encouragement today is that we stand firm in who we are. I love my family and I'm a part of the family that God has put me in and I'm not going to disgrace that family and I'm a part of the family of God and I'm not going to disgrace the family of God. I don't have to do that. There are other people that will do uh, what I do and be who I am. Find you a church. Get in your church. Find your friends. Serve the Lord. That's what God is saying to us here. We've got to make sure that we keep our eyes fixed on the things of God. He'll try to, Satan will try to rob us and take all of these things away from us. But I want you to know something. Things will happen and it feels like the boat begins to rock. And I want you to read Luke chapter 8. And I want you to notice a passage in Luke chapter 8 that talks about the disciples getting in the boat with Jesus to go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus got in the back of the boat and went to sleep. And as he went to sleep and they started out on the Sea of Galilee, a storm came over the hill. The boat was rocking. The sea was, was upheaving. And the boat was about to crack apart. And those fishermen couldn't do anything. And they woke Jesus and said, Master, don't you even care that we're perishing? And Jesus stood up and rubbed the sleep out of his eyes. And the wind was blowing and the boat was rocking. And they were hanging on for dear life. And Jesus said, Peace, be still. When you accepted Christ as your Savior, 
When you trusted him, you got in the boat with him. And that boat is going to hit storms along the way. But I want you to know, Jesus is always in the boat. And I want you to remember what he said to the disciples. He told the disciples, let's get in the boat. We're going to the other side. When the boat begins to rock, Jesus is there. All you got to do is speak. And he'll say, what do you want me to do? But don't ever forget, you'll never drown in the middle of that lake. You'll never, the boat will never break apart in the middle of that lake. You'll never have to swim for survival. We're going to the other side. All right. All right. Make sure that you keep that boat straight and following Christ. He's there for you. And he'll always be there for you. Satan is going to use other people to try to convince you that other things are better. He's going to try to bring friends to you, to lure you away and to tear you down. But don't be motivated by fancy words and don't be motivated by uh, trying to keep up with all those around you. Just be who you are and relax in him. That new plan on the old paths will bring the adversaries, but Satan is defeated. And don't let him defeat you. And then lastly, these new plans on the old paths, they never take you far from home. I am who I am by the grace of God. That's what Paul said. My name is what it is by the grace of God. And so we stand. We stand because God has blessed us and given to us. And we've done our very best that we might try to be everything that uh, God wants them to be. And from the time we're little, then we grow up and we want to make mom and dad proud of who we are. I remember that. I want them to be proud. But more than that, I want God to be able to say, well done. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, you can do this. By the grace of God, remain true to who you are. Remember whose you are. That's what I told you a few minutes ago. You are who you are. You belong to Christ. Let him go with you. Let him follow you. Let him lead you. Let him give you direct direction. Sink your roots, roots deep into the things of God. Put up that altar, not to another God, an altar of witness. There's an old song that we used to sing, is let others see Jesus in you. Let others see Jesus in you. To be what you can be for God, let others see Jesus in you. Parents, grandparents, we need to let our children, our grandchildren, see Jesus in us. We need to follow the paths of God. And this admonition this morning is to help us to understand we are who we are. A child of God. And I don't want to disappoint him, do you? If you don't know this Jesus you need to accept him this morning let's pray together with our heads bowed and our eyes closed you're here this morning without Christ you've never invited him into your heart to save you then I'm asking you to open your heart and pray this prayer with me very simply to receive Jesus as your Savior dear father I know that I'm a lost sinner. I believe Jesus Christ died for me. I believe he rose again. By faith, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of all of my sin. Save me, Lord. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. If you prayed that prayer with me this morning, God bless you. I'm asking you to get up and come and say yes to Jesus. 
Let me tell you what you need to do because you have. If you want to pray that prayer, come right now. We'll pray it together. You come. You need a church home, a place where you can worship and call home. You come. This is where I worship. This is where I need to be. You make this your home in Christ. God has laid it on your heart. Whatever he's leading you to do, you come this morning, and God will bless. Father, thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, speak to our hearts. Change us, O oh God. Father, may we respond, and Father, may we trust you. In this invitation, give us boldness to step out in Jesus' name. As we stand together and as we sing, I invite you to come, but come quickly. Come. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. He waits for you. He loves you. He wants to save you. God's love never changes. He loved you from the beginning. He loves you now. Come and make it all right with Him today. Let Him be your Savior. Surrender to His Lordship. Trust Him and believe Him. Say yes to Him. Let Him have His way. Oh, how much He loves you and me. waits for you. Would you receive him? Would you come? Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now, as in thy prayer.